So Netflix has announced the first two locations for what they're calling Netflix houses. These are gonna be spaces that are gonna occupy former department store space. Um, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna account for more than 100,000 square feet in each location. Uh, the two locations are gonna be um, at the King of Prussia Mall in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, which is like a very famous mall. Um, and then the Galleria Dallas in Dallas, Texas, which I'm not as familiar with. Um, and the Netflix houses are designed to, quote, create an unforgettable venue to explore your favorite Netflix stories and characters beyond the screen year round, end quote. So what the fuck are Netflix houses, right? <laughs> Pardon my French, but like, what even are these things? So the idea behind these, they're, they're going to be in-person entertainment venues, right? Um, and they're going to feature several elements within them. Because again, these aren't just like a single store. They're, they're big. They're, they're Again, they're taking over former department store space. So they're going to feature shopping outlets, right? Um, they're going to include eateries. Uh, and they'll also include experiential activities tied to Netflix's franchises. So like maybe a replica set from like Bridgerton, which you can see a character from here, right? Um, and they kind of describe this a little bit more in their press release saying, quote, imagine waltzing with your partner to an orchestral cover of a Taylor Swift song and a replica of the Bridgerton set. And then walking around the corner to, complete in the, to compete in the glass bridge challenge from Squid Game. After pretending to fight for your life, which I don't understand why Squid Game has been turned into something that's fun. The whole point is that they're not fun games. The idea is that you're going to die. But anyway, so after pretending to fight for your life, you've worked up an appetite. Why do I get a bite? You see a nearby restaurant with food inspired by Netflix shows from around the world. The meal is memorable, but you still want to buy some Stranger Things merch. Luckily, there's a shop that sells that Hellfire Club t-shirt you've always wanted. End quote. I'm sorry, just reading it now out loud, it sound, it's so cringe. But that's like the idea, is that it's basically... Like, if you think of, like, the Disney stores from, like, the 90s and the 2000s, um, but way bigger, right? And it's not just merchandise. It's, like, this experiential kind of thing. Notably, no movie theaters. <laughs> no screenings. No nothing like that. Um, which seems like the most obvious thing to do. Um, Variety notes that, you know, they Netflix will build upon previous pop-up experiences that they've created. Um, we have a quote here from Marion Lee, who's Netflix's uh, chief marketing officer, saying, quote, at Netflix House, you can enjoy regularly updated immersive experiences, indulge in retail therapy, and get a taste, literally, of your favorite Netflix series and films through unique food and drink offerings. We've launched more than 50 experiences in 25 cities, and Netflix House represents the next generation of our distinctive offerings. The venues will bring our beloved stories to life in new, ever-changing, and unexpected ways, end quote. Um, the, so again, like I kind of sarcastically alluded to, there's not going to be like any like theater or screening spaces, um, you know, cause the point of, of these Netflix houses, um, they exist primarily to serve as advertising, right? Um, uh, Variety notes here that Netflix doesn't initially seem like they want to make this like a core part of their business. It's more of, cre it's more of a way to create opportunities for fan engagement, right? It's not meant to be something that stands on its own. It's always meant to be pointing you back to, to the core streaming service, right? Um, you know, maybe down the line, they'll do, they'll include novelty screenings like of, of like a very popular Netflix movie or something like I alluded to, but again, they don't want to eat into the subscription business. Um, but again, I feel like it's two different experiences. Like a screening is, is a different experience. So I feel like you could still, you know, showcase some of this content in a theatrical setting without it's i don't think anyone's gonna be like i'm gonna cancel my netflix subscription because i can just go to the netflix house and watch this one movie and this is the only thing they're gonna screen for three months like i, I think if you do it sporadically enough you're not gonna eat into your own business there right but overall i mean this is like an interesting idea um maybe not in the sense from like the netflix angle but just like how to repurpose these empty spaces right because you know malls to say they're a dying industry is maybe being favorable. Like some would argue they're already dead and they've been dead for a long time. And and these spaces can survive and thrive. People like to go out and do stuff. They just don't necessarily want to necessarily go shopping. So the mall, the mall industry, if you will, is just very, is just still in this tunnel vision um, of, you know, how do we get people to come back to the mall to shop? What they don't understand is, is that you need to get people to come out to do something that they want to come out and do. Something that they can't do at home. Um, online shopping is better in almost every way. Just in terms of the user experience. You could talk about the, 
you know, the domination of mega corporations like Amazon or kind of pushing out mom and pop shop, things like, that. okay. But, 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 um, vendors in malls were rarely mom and pop shops, right? They were usually, you know, especially as it got, you know, farther and farther into the years, uh, were, were chains anyway. Um, so, you know, it, it, it would be an interesting use of the space, right? The, the malls that have thrived and been successful post, you know, the, the by the turn of the century have been the ones to innovate and make their malls a, a, a destination, like something you have to go do. That the things you can, the individual pieces are things you want to go do, but then the, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. That it's not just about going to each store that you want to go to. It's about being at the mall or this particular mall, right? Um, but from the Netflix angle, I'm very skeptical because a pop-up experience, which are typically hastily thrown together, cheap to produce, and way overpriced, and the idea is that you're able to get away with that because A, people are such fans of the thing, and... Uh, it's only going to be around for like a couple weeks or a couple months, right? And and people don't get burned, and and like you don't have to worry, worry about people being like, oh, that sucked. I'm never coming back because you only expect someone to come do it once. These are permanent investments. These are like long term investments. Do people care enough about these franchises to go there? Like, like I know I'm a little bit out of the loop, but like, is Stranger Things like if this was 2016, maybe. Is Stranger Things really the property, the, as strong of a property as Netflix thinks it is to, to, to justify something like this? Is Bridgerton, is Squid Game? I, I don't know. Uh, I, my instinct is no. And it's interesting because, again, like these spaces that they're occupying, these former department stores, department stores were like the anchors for these malls. Like they were the big attraction. And you would then, you know, rarely would you go to the mall just for one of the little stores. You would go because you're going to JCPenney. And you're like, oh, well, while I'm there why don't I go to this other store and this other one, right? It would kind of brought you in. This almost feels like it's going to be reversed where it's like, I don't think anyone's going to just go to the Netflix house, one of these Netflix houses. I think people, if they're already at the mall and just looking for something to do, they might swing by and be like, yeah, let's go check this out. But I don't know. This is a really big bet. Um, you know, and I am always talking about taking big swings and taking big bets. So, you know, all, all power to Netflix to do this. But, um, this might be a little bit misplaced, especially if their inspiration are like cheap gimmicky pop-up experiences that they've that they've done. But I guess those have been successful enough to inspire all of this.